produced for and by this project will be free and openly available. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Bob McMillan, presenting remotely from Canada. Today, I'm pleased to give you a brief introduction to some work our group has been doing to create a hydrologically explicit, spatially exact classification of landforms for Canada at one to 500,000 scale. I would like to begin by acknowledging all of my co-authors, but especially Tom Hengel from ISRIC, who was undertaken to be our representative at the session today and who will answer any questions you may have. By way of background, let me introduce you to the Soil Landscapes of Canada map at one to one million scale. The SLC is presently the only national map of soils for Canada. However, the, C the SLC has several obvious problems. Polygons are inconsistent across the country. There are many examples of polygons not aligning well with hydrography and other readily observable physical features. Concepts used to delineate polygons and to describe map units vary widely across the country. And many polygons outside the agricultural area contain no information at all about soil components. Our initial motivation for this work was to investigate options for updating and improving the SLC map. We decided to first try to create a new and consistent spatial fabric to act as proto-polygons for a new SLC at 1 to 500,000 scale. We wanted particularly to aim to create polygons that were complete and consistent across the country and that aligned exactly with observable physical features, particular, particularly hydrology. Our primary objective was therefore to produce an updated SLC map for Canada at 1 to 500,000 scale. We decided to do this in three stages. First, create a new spatial fabric. Second, assign environmental attributes to each polygon of the new spatial fabric. Third, associate the most likely soil type or soil types with each new polygon. We are aware of many existing methods for automated classification of landforms, some of which are listed here. We applied most of the methods listed here to the DEM for all of Canada and produced interesting and credible results. All of these other approaches are still being investigated and evaluated, but today's presentation focuses on an entirely new approach that we feel has several important advantages. Our new classification is quite simple to implement using the following steps. Step one, prepare a hydrologically correct DEM for all of Canada at 250 meters. Step two, process the DEM to compute only two terrain derivatives, Z to stream and percent Z to stream. Step three, classify the two terrain derivatives into eight classes of relief and three classes of landform position. Step four, combine the classified grids to produce 24 unique combinations of absolute and relative relief. And step five, simplify, filter, and smooth this initial raster classification. Our approach involved adding the following three post-processing steps. Step six, further smooth and simplify vector polygons for the final landform classification using capabilities provided by GRASS GIS. Step seven, prepare final raster and vector data and post it to an online interactive platform for access and review. Step eight, obtain user input and evaluation of the protopolygons via the online platform. This slide simply illustrates the two terrain derivatives on which the classification is based. These are Z to stream, which is elevation above a channel, and percent Z to stream, which is a measure of relative slope position. These variables require prior calculation of hydrological surface flow networks for the entire DEM. An explanatory slide is included in the online version of this presentation 
for anyone interested in knowing more about how these two variables were computed. In step 3, we classified the numeric values into eight classes of relief based on Z to stream and three classes of slope position based on percent Z to stream. The relief classes are essentially those proposed by Hammond, except that we have subdivided Hammond's class 1 of 0 to 30 meters into four finer subclasses. The finer differentiation allows us to identify and map important differences in low relief areas. In step 4, we simply add the numeric code values for the eight relief classes to the three code values for relative slope position classes. This produces 24 unique combinations plus one additional code for open water of 10. Some of these possible combinations simply never occur, while others occur to such a limited extent that they can be ignored and removed. In step 5, we simplify, filter, and smooth the classification. As with any raster classification, um, this one exhibits some pixelation and some classified regions that are too small to be suitable for presentation at 1 to 500,000 scale. We first simplified by renumbering the code values for classes of very limited occurrence into the code value for the next most similar class. We then manually recorded as water, code 10, all cells with a value of Z to stream equal to zero. And finally, we used a remove filter, not a modal filter, to remove all clusters of contiguous grid cells of the same classification that were less than 100 cells in extent. The remove filter operation removes small areas of classified values without greatly changing the overall spatial pattern or overly smoothing the results. In step 6, we use the functionality available in GRASS-GIS to first convert our smoothed and simplified raster of landform classes into vector polygons. Then we built a clean vector topological structure for all polygons. Next, we removed and dissolved any remaining small polygons below a minimum acceptable area. And finally, we smoothed and thinned the new vector polygons to remove any unneeded vertices and to produce a more aesthetically pleasing set of polygons with a smaller file size. The yellow lines in these examples display the existing SLC polygons and permit a visual comparison of the new polygon fabric to the existing SLC polygons. In step 7, we posted vector and raster maps of the new classification along with a number of raster images to act as reference or base layers to an online platform where they can easily be accessed, reviewed, and evaluated. Our primary result, for the moment, is production of a landform classification for Canada that has only 17 unique classes. This classification is complete, consistent, comparable everywhere, spatially detailed, interpretable, and follows major local hydrological and topographic features explicitly and exactly. In addition to the highly specific local detail, the overall general pattern of the classification agrees well with many of the existing 1 to 1 million scale SLC polygon boundaries. This slide illustrates the new landform classes in comparison with the SLC polygons, shown here in yellow. The greater amount of fine spatial detail and the improved alignment of the new polygons to hydrological and topographic features is readily apparent. Also apparent is the improved ability to interpret these new landform classes in terms of landscape position and environmental conditions. The descriptive legend illustrated here is included in the presentation for completeness. Interested individuals can consult an online version of this presentation if they wish to review this legend in greater detail. We present here a couple of slides to visually illustrate how the new polygons effectively delineate different landforms, and especially how they precisely follow drainage patterns and water bodies, 
and work their way upslope, delineating major slope changes, going from channel to ridgetop. Observe the precision and detail with which important changes in drainage regime and surface form are delineated in this example. This slide is included to illustrate one example of how the classification is just as successful at delineating important changes in drainage and landform position in landscapes of low relief as it is in areas of high relief. Note the precision with which the eskers and lakes are delineated. Things that stick up, like eskers, are delineated in a way that's comparable to things that stick down, like rivers and lakes. At this point, we have just begun to evaluate the new landform class polygons and to compare them to existing SLC polygons. But already we can make the following observations. Point one, the new polygons offer vastly greater spatial detail than the SLC polygons. Point two, the new polygons offer vastly improved alignment with observable physical and hydrological features. Point three, the new polygons occupy describable and interpretable positions in the landscape. Point four, the new polygons are consistent and comparable everywhere. Point five, the new classification is relatively insensitive to the scale of the landscapes it is classifying or to the resolution of the DEM used to apply the classification. We have done some preliminary visual and quantitative review of the landform classes and can report that they appear to delineate meaningful variations with respect to several topographic and environmental attributes. For example, mean slope gradient, as illustrated here, differs significantly by landform class. We've also noted differences in pattern and density of vegetation by class. Differences in pattern of moisture by class is inferred from DEM moisture indices. And differences in parent material types and texture by landform class. We do not see this fairly conventional approach of producing vector polygons of empirically defined landform classes as being at all at odds with or in competition with the emerging trend in digital soil mapping towards prediction of continuous patterns of distribution of individual soil classes or soil properties. Rather, we argue that vector polygons, such as presented here, have a role to play that is complementary to and supportive of the prediction of continuous soil properties and soil classes. We contend that such uh, polygons can act as a stable and interpretable spatial framework for other DSM maps. As an example of this, we overlaid a copy of the landform classification polygons on top of a raster map of the UK NatMap Soil Associations. We noted an extremely good correspondence between our polygon boundaries and the spatial patterns of NatMap soil associations. This slide is included to provide an illustration of the landform class polygons portrayed at the scale of 1 to 500,000 that they were designed to be used at. Most of the example images in this presentation have been at a scale of 1 to 1 million or greater in order to provide a synoptic overview and to illustrate areas of greater aerial extent. We are confident that the polygon density and minimum size area associated with these polygons are appropriate for display and use at 1 to 500,000 scale. We are still at, at a rel relatively early stage in evaluating the landform classification. However, we can conclude that it warrants further investigation. These landform classes are extremely easy to compute provide a complete and comprehensive polygon framework for all of Canada, and meet our initial goal of being hydrologically explicit and spatially exact. In terms of next steps, within Canada we are planning to continue to evaluate and hopefully to improve the landform polygons under the auspices of the Canadian Digital Soil Data Consortium. We have begun to review and evaluate the classification using voluntary crowdsourced input. We hope to shortly begin to associate environmental attributes with each polygon of the new spatial fabric. And then we hope to go on to associate one or more most likely soils with each landform polygon. Eventually, 
We hope to have a new, complete and fully attributed soil polygon map for all of Canada, produced largely by volunteer and crowdsourced effort. In the larger global context, we see opportunities to contribute the new landform classification as a potential framework for existing and proposed global soil map products. For example, ISRIC's new Soil Grids 250 metre product, or perhaps the new global solar map proposed by the Global Soil Partnership. To this end, we have already begun processing a global 250 metre DEM to compute the new landform classification polygons globally. Thank you for your attention and your interest. I'd like to point out that all work carried out for this project has been voluntary and unpaid. The work is being coordinated and organized through a voluntary collective of soil scientists and digital soil mappers under the guidance of the Canadian Digital Soil Data Consortium. All data produced for and by this project will be free and openly available. Thank you.